It's the Middle Ages and times have been tough for a peasant like yourself. Drought and the subsequent poor harvest have devastated your people, and widespread famine is around the corner. To make matters worse, taxes have been raised because your rulers are warring with other rulers. You've had enough of watching on as your children starve, but in the absence of Twitter, seeking social justice will mean rounding up real people and stating your case. Before you know it though, you've been reported by someone and have quickly been suspended from peasant duties. Your interrogators aren't interested in malnourished kids and dying crops, and as they stretch your body on the rack, you admit to more than you ever did which was only get some folks together to talk about unfairness. You've been branded a traitor, treasonous, and the worst is going to happen to you. So there you are, a brave warrior of social justice who only wanted some respite from the demands of high taxes during a very hard time for peasants. It doesn't really matter that you didn't kill anyone or start a riot. What matters is you've been accused of plotting an Occupy the Lord's Manor movement. Having been stretched on the rack, you admitted to being somewhat disgruntled about watching your children die in front of you and not being able to get your hands on that most cherished commodity, bread. You hardly started a peasant's revolt, but a mere peasant get-together to discuss the drawbacks of serfdom really got the nobility all hot and bothered. They're all too familiar with peasant revolts of the past, and any kind of insubordination will be dealt with seriously. That meant a medley of tried and tested cruel and unusual punishments for you as you informed your torturers of your guilt and took a few other peeved peasants down with you. You might be broken, but you're not dead, and the nobility wants to make an example of you. What's on offer? Well, as they would like to make an example of you, they want to make your death a public spectacle. Maybe after seeing you scream, the man in the street will think twice about complaining about being taxed into starvation. The nobility have a brainstorming meeting and try to think of some especially gruesome punishment for you. Burned at the stake in full public view, says one of the wealthy adjudicators. So passe, someone retorts. Burning is so 13th century. Come on guys, let's try and think outside the box. Another man puts up his hand and looks like he might have a good answer. He says, hanged, drawn, and quartered. But then we eviscerate him and stick his head on a pike. He looks crestfallen when his boss replies, Gilbert, you know very well we did that last month. It's hardly original now, isn't it? Okay, I've got one, says a guy right at the back. Without hardly looking up and with a mean glare at his eyes, he says, We make a box that looks a bit like a coffin, but shaped like a human. We fill this with spikes, and when it's closed, all those spikes impale him, and maybe he'll leave some gaps where the blood will flow out. You know, it could look pretty cool. The boss rubs his whiskers and thinks for a while. Yeah, that might be sufficiently brutal. I like the streams of blood thing, very Romanesque. The scenario we've just outlined of course didn't happen, and we don't need to tell you that people didn't speak like that back in the Middle Ages. What is true about that conversation is that the Iron Maiden, as well as being the name of a British heavy metal band who wrote songs with names such as The Number of the Beast, was indeed a box with spikes on the inside. It looked something like the box an Egyptian mummy would be kept in, something called a sarcophagus. You can still find Iron Maidens in museums today. They capture the imagination like no other contraption simply because they look so barbaric. Any upset peasant who'd even heard about one of these would run to the hills if he thought the nobles were after him. The burning question though is where and when were they used and on whom were they used? This part has troubled historians for years, but that hasn't stopped numerous websites just stating they were used and including no more information. First of all, we aren't doing a show today on something we've just made up or found on a dubious website that likes to say, you won't believe what happened next. Iron Maidens exist and they have been around for quite some time. A few of them are now artifacts that people can take selfies with in museums. At the same time, Google Glass and T-Mobile exist and no one uses them much either. Ok, so the first time anyone mentioned an Iron Maiden being used, much like the one we're talking about today, was when a German philosopher by the name of Johann Philipp Siebenkees talked about one. He wrote that in 1515, a coin forger in Nuremberg had gone to bed for eternity in one. How did he know this? He was writing in the late 18th century, and no one seems to know how he knew about Iron Maidens. Well, he also studied ancient history, and stories have been passed down from ancient times regarding people being put to death in a rather uncomfortable box. Maybe the philosopher embellished those boxes in his account. For good reason, there are skeptics, because after he wrote about those things, people started making them. In the 19th century, making Iron Maidens was all the rage, and that's why there are so many of them around today in museums. If you're from the US, you can see one for yourself in the San Diego Museum of Man. The earliest iteration of the Iron Maiden was actually made in Nuremberg in 1802 after Stephen Keyes' account. That one was destroyed in the Second World War. Why would people start making them in the 19th century and not using them? One of the reasons that kept popping up, according to scholars, was linked to propaganda. 
If people in the 19th century were told this is how people were punished in the Middle Ages, they would think, wow, we have it so good today, hanging is like a slap on the wrist. It's thought Stephen Keyes made the entire thing up and there was no coin forger who got punctured inside a spike spangled sarcophagus. It seems other countries just ran with the lie and also used the Iron Maiden as a way to make people realize that the past was brutal and the present was just peachy perfect and humane. So there you go, in the Middle Ages and after, there were methods of torture we find utterly repellent today, and there were gruesome ways people were executed, but the Iron Maiden was an invention of more civilized people who wanted to paint their predecessors on planet Earth as savages. And since you're definitely not a savage, do the civilized thing and watch another great episode of the Infographics Show. We've picked out two for you, so click on this episode here or this one over here.